Phoenix, I am inside of you. There's got to be a better way to introduce this. You are Locked On Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody. Welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel, and thank you for making us first listen every single day. And, yeah, I'm pretty geeked up because I've already been to the Birmingham airport and the Atlanta airport and now the Phoenix airport. Now I'm in the glorious home two suites here in downtown Phoenix right next to the Footprint Center where I'll be going to the Phoenix Suns, Minnesota Timberwolves game tomorrow night. And, um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And my son's already been by here, and he said, yeah, they're like they've put up street signs for Alabama produce like Alabama way and Purdue street and, you know, uh, Ooh. Yukon Avenue. And, uh, I think NC state got an alley, but I'm not sure. Um, but we, that's what you get when you're an 11 seat. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Alfred who saw me at the Birmingham airport. And it's always funny. Cause like, I don't know how it is with you, Jimmy, sometimes, but like people will see me and I think, like, I'm like, are they looking at me because they recognize me because I know them or because they know me from something else or the podcast or whatever? And so it's always dangerous for me because I always got to pretend like I've known them all my life, you know, because <laughs> I don't. <laughs> and I was like, hey, buddy, what's up? I hadn't seen you in a while. And they're always like, well, truth is, you've never seen me before. Um, but Alfred stopped me in the in the airport and said he watches the show and loves it and appreciate him. So, Jimmy, I'm out here. Uh Brian Passick, I've talked to him. We're going to go to shoot around tomorrow. I can't wait for that. It's going to cool. be at that stadium. Um, and Latrell Wrightsell appears ready to rock. That's Alabama, very, that's very big. That is very big. The Alabama uh, PR team for or social media team that does the videos for basketball, they deserve all the raises. They they've been putting out videos that are just super hype. And um, yeah, it's, it's exciting times here in Phoenix, lovely Phoenix, Arizona, Jimmy. Wow. And uh, so my memory, I've only been there for sports one time and we stayed in Phoenix, but the game is in Glendale. It's a little bit of a drive. It's not a crazy drive, but it's a little bit of a drive. I would say it's if I recall, 25 minutes. I was going to say 30 minutes, but uh, OK, that should be great. Uh, really cool. I bet you see a lot of Alabama fans around town. I know several people that have made the trips. So I, I think you you will not be the only bammer in sight. So cool that on final four weekend, which I've been a fan of my whole life. There, there hasn't been a time when I wasn't excited about final four weekend and look forward to watching the games. And it boggles my mind that my team is, is playing in this thing. Uh, something I thought I might not ever see really. And, and here we are. So really excited. What I want fans to understand or realize, and you put it really in the opening, you know, there's no moral victories. I, I, I'll be disappointed if Alabama loses to Connecticut, no moral victories. But, but I will say this, before the game even starts, that I plan to, even in my living room in Tuscaloosa, uh, if Alabama ends up on the short end of this thing to UConn, when the game's over, I, I'm going to stand and, and applaud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter what happens. doesn't matter if it's 80 to 50 or, or Alabama turns it over 19 times. I'm going to stand and applaud when it's over 100%. because I'm applauding not the loss, not the loss. I'm applauding the run the run to get there and, and the fact that they made Alabama history. So uh, that team deserves some applause, no matter what happens. That That's not a moral victory thing. Uh, I, I want to beat UConn. And the fact of the matter is we should be so thrilled because we got a shot to beat UConn. We're one of the big boys. Now this isn't Alabama was the number one seed in this tournament last year. This isn't a fluke. This is what should have happened last year and might yeah. have Brandon Hatton pulled his groin. Got to be a better way to say that. That's twice you said that. <laughs> the double entendres in this show are flying like Trelly's three pointers. <laughs> um, but you're right. And look, I know some of this is probably repeat of things we've said during the week ever since we knew we were going to be in the final four. But there's a glass ceiling we broke through. You know, there's the and again, it finally dawned on me once you once you've made it to the final four you always think you'll make it to the final four the next year. Right. And until you get there, you think you're never going to get there. You know, it's like this insurmountable thing that you will never be able to climb. And then 
when you get there, you're like, I mean, from now on, I'm always going to be like, well, Alabama could make a run. I can't tell you how many Auburn people, I, I think they've been, to, I guess they've been to three tournaments since they went in, in 19. Every time Auburn people tell me they, they think they're going to the Final Four. Every time. Before that, none of them ever said they were going. Even when they're there, not. There's a the better Auburn. chance. Yeah, there, there's a better chance that, that Alabama will be favored to get to the Final Four and not make it. Exactly. I mean, that, that, that there's, there's a chance of that. That's what happened last year. Exactly. And the, I, the, look, and the recruiting never stops. I'm going to tell you that um, I talked to somebody that has contacts within the staff. And when recruiting's going, the, the phone's been blowing up for, for our coaches because people are getting to see our style more so now than ever. Now, you know, has Alabama been on CBS? Has Alabama been on primetime ESPN? Of course they have. All those things are true. But nobody watches basketball the way you watch NCAA tournament basketball. It's just different. And so now that we've been playing North Carolina, you know, who was the number one seed, and we had some primetime, you know, looks there. Then we played Clemson. Clemson was super hot. They'd beaten a two and a three. Um, and we had just beaten North Carolina, and they knew it was contrasting styles and it'd be a fun game. Some kids are seeing it. The kid that just decommitted, uh, boy, his name escapes me right now. I'm sorry. I'm, I got a little jet lag. Terry from USC? Yes, yes, yes. He um, he has said, yeah, Alabama and I are talking now. I mean, look, I, what does that mean for Mark Sears? I don't know. And, again, I know I'm talking 90 to nothing. I know our good friend Aaron Suttles, friend of the program who works with Yay Alabama, he said, we're going to do everything we can do to keep Mark Sears here another and yeah, that's music to my ears. I'm surprised that made. I'm surprised that made a blip on Twitter. Like that surprised people. <laughs> I mean, you well, know, and I'm I'm glad Aaron said it. No, nothing against Aaron. I'm glad he said that. But I mean, it made a little bit of like, boy, did you hear what Subtle said? Like, did anybody think that that wasn't true? No, I think it's just weird to hear it out loud now. Yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes, yeah, because it's a, such a new world. I, I think we're still not used to the new world. I mean, the new no. world, we're not used to it. And, and that you can say things like that out loud. Uh, we're not used to that, but we need to get used to it because it's here to stay in some form or another different show. Well, and, but some NIL thing happened today where some state, I think, it, I can't remember which state it is, but a state amended their NIL rules. It's Louisiana. Amended, Louisiana. Their, amended their NIL rules to take into account schools paying players directly for their NIL rights which I've said from minute number one is the future. That's where this is going. That's and, where it needs uh, to be. And that's where Louisiana becomes the first state to sort of prepare for that eventuality. Um, And Fran, you know, again, going back to what you said about this brave new world, Fran Fraschilla had a tweet uh, that I read on the plane where he said, hey, you know, Eric Musselman leaves Arkansas to go to USC. Uh, this is probably one of those where I think, both of them could do better. And, you know, Eric Musselman is getting out and Arkansas could probably also get a better coach. Um, but Fran Fischilla said, hey, I'd go after Will Wade. He would scare the crap out of the SEC. And somebody tweeted back at him like, you mean that slimy cheater? And he said, yeah, what he did is no longer illegal. And, you know, he had LSU in some pretty good position. So, yeah, I mean, that's – it's still – like the first thing you want to say about Will Wade is cheater, but then you want to say, well, yeah, that's kind of what we all do now, just out in the open, you know? So um, anyway, we're going to talk some more about this. We're going to talk some football, of course, uh, some midweek visits. We're going to talk uh, Caleb Odom surprising and getting some love uh, from Jaleel Hurley. We'll talk all that right after this. Of course, right now I need to tell you about eBay Motors. You know you love eBay Motors. You've been to eBay Motors, I'm sure. You should go to eBay Motors because that's where you need to get some of your, your auto stuff. That's, they got it at eBay Motors. They got whatever you want. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and much, 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 much more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time of your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not burning cash, baby. Keep your ride or die. Lot. 
Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And eBay guaranteed fit only available to U.S. customers. Um, so I'll hopefully we have another pod tomorrow. I can't guarantee it just because I'll be out and about a bunch. But um, at the very least, we will go on after probably win, lose, or draw after UConn, I would assume. Um, I got to get back from the stadium and all that stuff, but we got to figure out a way to – if we win, we got to figure out a way to make it happen. Um, I don't know how. We'll just have to do it. Um, planning to watch uh, – sounds boring uh, based on what you're doing. Planning to watch here in the, in the Tuscaloosa condo. Uh, although I may pull a, something out of the ordinary for me. If, if Alabama wins – I might make my way down to the strip, which is not normally a thing I would do. I just know the kids are going to make no, fun of me. No, you got to do it. I think I, the kids it. are going to make fun of me, but I'm used to that. You know, that wouldn't be the first time that kids have made fun of me. But yeah, I think you put on a ball cap and turn it backwards. You'll blend right in, bro. Uh, that's a good idea. Maybe carry a skateboard and say, <laughs> What are you? How about it, fellow kids? And just every time somebody says something, go, Whatever, whatever you want to do. We won the basketball contest, fellow kids. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just impress them with, uh, you know, wear some block, wear something with spray paint locked on Bama on a shirt or something. Get us some subscribers, bro. Yeah. Um, hey, it's funny. Right. Not, well, we, we do have students that listen to the show. I don't, I don't, I mean, you know, we don't, I've been stopped in Tuscaloosa in, in student places, rammer jammers, publics by students who recognize them from the show and not yet. Like, well, no, that hasn't happened. <laughs> but no, I have been stopped. I was stopped, but some not students watch doing. the show, and I really appreciate it because yeah. when I was a student, I admire that because I don't know that I would have listened to podcasts as a student, but I'm not as smart as today's students are. All right. If you're going out to try and recruit some students, don't go like this. That's all I ask. <laughs> so simple a caveman <laughs> could do it. <laughs> All right, so let's talk a little football, Jimmy. Um, so we will have a lot more basketball talk. Don't worry. I'm not putting shade on it. I promise you. I'm so geeked up. I don't even want to talk about it. I'm scared to jinx it. Um, so the the visits, how, how did some of the visits go? I know we had some midweek visits, and there was a certain offensive lineman that apparently ha had a great time. Yeah, Micah Debos, are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. Debos. Yeah, uh, we uh, Debos w was there. Took a picture of Jalen Milrow. We put up on the BOL site. You know, Debos, I've blown hot and cold on just my own personal opinion. I, I was so on the Debos train all the way back to him being in eighth grade is when I first started talking about it. Just shows how fast time has flown because now he's about to be a 12th grader this fall. And I'm like, I swear this guy was in the eighth grade like six months ago when uh, a Viger buddy sent me info about him and uh, and now he's he's close to making a decision. And by that, I mean sometime this year. Uh, committed to Georgia, no longer committed to Georgia. Then it looked like Alabama. Then it looked like Auburn. Now it looks like LSU. So I, I'm just saying with him, I would just kind of hit a pause button on any Alabama fan that wants to know, where's Mike Debo's going? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> no one knows. But he seemed to really enjoy his time at Alabama. I like him more. Joseph Hastings at BOL shared a really interesting factoid about Debo's He's always fought this issue with his weight. He can be heavy at times, too heavy, even to the point you're like, gosh, is this guy? And I think that's why he was more highly rated than he is now. But in an effort to improve that, he is spending this spring playing tennis for Viger, playing tennis. and do, I mean, that's, that's impressive for a guy his size that he would not only have the cardio to do that because that's a high-intensity cardio sport, to say the least, but that he would uh, – uh, and obviously he plays basketball as well because you saw him play basketball. So he's doing these cardio things because he's trying to be getting better athletic shape. And let me tell you, a Mike Debos in really good athletic shape would have enormous upside. I see him as a bit of a project, and, and that, that term turns some people off. But what you have to realize is they're all projects. They're, they're all projects to one extent or another. I can name project after project that ended up being fantastic players. One that comes immediately to mind at the same position is DJ Fluker, who also showed up not anywhere near ready to play at the SEC level. Took him two years. But, man, when he when he got there, he really got there, didn't he? Uh, mute. Mute. Hey, the, 
The fan it's, it's next, the Tom change got me, Jimmy. The fan next to you at the game Saturday night is going to wish you were on mute. Yeah, you know, there's no doubt. <laughs> uh, you know, um, I, I told my son, uh, you know, everybody's heard the story on this podcast that I already had tickets to Final Four. I was coming regardless just to be with my son and hang out. And now that Alabama's there, uh, and I'm like, okay, I wasn't going to the championship game before. But I'm like, if we go, I'm probably going to have to stay and go. I'm probably going to. And True was like, well, I'll just have to tell my friend. I was like, yeah, and I got bad news for you. I'm probably going to need both seats. I'm going to be so geeked up. So <laughs> <laughs> you might not be going either. Uh, Left leg in but, one, right leg in the other. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, with uh, Debo's, I'm thinking it's if he is not your, your ace in the hole offensive tackle for this class, you are getting a superstar. You are getting a – the ceiling is really high, and you're it's a it's worth whatever risk you think. But if he is your ace and all, like he's your best offensive lineman that you're signing, it's a risk the other way. I feel like, you know, if you get Jackson Lloyd, that's another guy who apparently has been oh, – I recently. saw him. I yeah. saw Jackson Lloyd. And he looks oh. great. If you get Jackson yeah. Lloyd and Debo's, my God, you would – okay, great. But if you only get Debo's, I feel like – it's it's more of a risk, and I don't mean that as a shot at him necessarily. I'm just saying I feel like his his a boomer bust potential is very high in both directions. You know, this has just struck me about when I said <laughs> when I called Mike Debo's a project. I know that's going to turn people off. Th- everyone, think of this for a second because this thought just occurred to me, and and I think about nothing but football for for decades. How about this? I saw Jackson Lloyd, and he is one of the most highly rated tackles in the country, and I, I was impressed. And all I'm just talking about is the kid standing there. Um, he's got to add weight. He's a kid that needs to add yeah. weight. He's he's got he's he plays a lot of sports other than football. He's a baseball player, which is really impressive. He's got to add weight to be a really good player in the SEC, and he will. And I'm sure that'll be easy. But isn't it funny how I said Micah Debos is a project? because he has to reshape his body. So I called him a project. And everybody goes, uh, can we get somebody else? Jackson Lloyd's a project too. We got to add weight to him. He ain't ready. He's got to add the weight for whatever reason as fans. We don't look at that as a project. We only look at it as a project when a kid has to reshape his body by losing weight. And that just goes to show why we're so far off in both directions. All No kid, no lineman especially, leaves high school ready. For, for to play SEC football with Caden hey, Rocker proved that last year. Great example of you can't get a more highly recruited player than Proctor. And while he did play, and he was, he was I good. would say serviceable, and then really good late in the year, uh, he was playing because Pritchett and some other Alabama players just simply weren't ready. Proctor wasn't ready to be a really good SEC player in August or September of last year. He just kind of became that way because we threw him into the deep end of the pool. By the end of the year, he could swim. First of all, I really believe this, especially at their age, it's, it's, it's at my age, it's a different problem. But at these kids' age, I think it is so much easier to lose weight, to lose bad weight, than to put on good weight. And I, so that's a, that would be another <laughs> mark in the good way for Debo's over Lloyd. But you're right about that. Now, I had an idea, Jimmy. I got, I got a way to solve both our problems. Put Lloyd in a love seat on one side of the court. Debo's serves cupcakes right at him on the other side of the court. You work on footwork. You don't. I mean, it just it's it's, it's win win. I don't think those cupcakes are going to bounce. But <laughs> and if so, I wouldn't eat them. Even if I was trying to gain weight, I wouldn't eat a cupcake that bounced. But a cupcake that it's a good that, idea. Right? Mika Dubos had just thrown in the air and just all those it. things that Debos is not eating, Jackson Lloyd should eat. But but that that's to say they're they're both really good prospects, and Alabama has got a really good shot at both. Even though Jackson Lloyd's California and Debos is Alabama, and he's from Pritchard Viger. Uh, Alabama's got a good shot at both. We'll see. I think that's Jackson Lloyd's second trip to Tuscaloosa. Uh, that's that's that's, that's a good sign considering how far he's got to go. Amazon Fire TV, boy, love this thing. I got it. Use it. It's awesome. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick TV that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access 
to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or college basketball tournaments like the NCAA Final Four, you're going to want to have Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis highlights and more to keep up with the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, and beyond. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit Amazon.com Locked On Fire TV. That is Amazon.com Locked On Fire TV. Okay, I want to talk about Caleb Odom first, but because Jaleel Hurley like was singing his praises, going, "Um, he's a dude. We like we're having trouble stopping him," and that makes sense because he's big, he's he's developed pretty well, and he's a huge guy that. They probably hadn't seen somebody like him in practice recently. So, um, but how many linebackers are we going to take in this class again? Because it seems like, why are we even talking about Debose and Lloyd when they're not linebackers? It seems <laughs> like we're just taking a bunch of linebackers and go, okay, y'all figure it out. Yeah, yeah real quickly on, on Odom, because I was standing there with Jaleel Hurley when, when he was asked about Odom. And it was, and Jaleel, by the way, is a great interview. It's the first time I think he's been with the media. So no one had really seen his personality since he's been at Alabama up close and he, he's engaging in the uh, Terry on Arnold sense. It's, it's a pretty decent cop in terms of him. I think he's got Terry on Arnold upside in terms of with interviews and uh, uh, the, the, the guy that asked the question to, uh, to Odom, he's a radio guy uh, that, that asked the question to, to Jaleel about, you know, is it difficult to, uh, to guard Caleb Odom? You know, he's six, five, you know, what, why is he, He's six five. Why is he difficult to to cover? And Jaleel's like, because he's six five. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like you answered your. And he was saying it with a smile and laughing. He's like, he's six five. Like you. And, and and the great thing there is, other than just the observation that everybody knows he's six five, but some kids are that big and don't use it. You know, the best guys in the world, the guys that are in the NFL that are big receivers. They use that as an asset in terms of blocking out. It's very similar to basketball. Like looks out there in Phoenix, you know, the best wide receivers that are big, they block out defensive backs no different than you're blocking out for a rebound. And, and it sounded to me like Caleb is really using his size uh, to his advantage and, and he isn't just out there pretending that he's 5'11". Uh, now as to the linebackers, here's a couple things. There are four inside linebackers right now committed to Alabama in this class. That seems like a lot, and it is a lot. Uh, but keep this in mind. Let's say for right now, Alabama's got the exact right number of inside linebackers on the roster, and I'm not even telling you that's true, but let's just pretend that right now Alabama's got the right number. Okay, you lose Deontay Lawson to the NFL. You probably lose Jihad Campbell to the NFL, and Justin Jefferson is a senior. So you need three, period. You need three, period. Right now Alabama's got four. But are you telling me that in the next year that another one of those inside linebackers isn't getting in the portal? So I don't think four is crazy at all based on Alabama's current situation. Now, I do agree that once you start adding more, and that, that could very well happen, once you start adding more, I think then it's like, boy, that seems like a lot. But those four kids that right now are saying they're going to Alabama are committed. And, and not anyone listening to us right now can swear that all four kids are going to sign with Alabama in December. I mean, you, uh, there's contingency after contingency after contingency, right? So let's just see how it all plays out. But Alabama needed to sign numbers of inside linebacker because you're losing three. You know, you brought up a great point about uh, Terry on Arnold. Look, if I'm Jaleel Hurley, if I'm any of the defensive backs, really if I'm any of the players – but especially if I'm any of the defensive backs, what I'm going to do is say, all right, I'm going to do whatever whatever Terry on Arnold did last year <laughs> in terms of interviews. I'm going to do that. He was the talk of the of the NFL interviews and it all this. Make him stuff. famous. It helped it, make him famous, and it and probably it, got him extra looks because the NFL is like, man, I love this guy. Let's watch his tape again. And I mean, it may not, you know, for it. You think, okay, well, what do it do? Knock, bring him up a couple of spots. Yeah, that's a big deal. That's a yeah. really big deal. Well, so you know, it, it gets him extra looks. The NFL's not going to draft somebody because they're good in interviews. 
Yeah. But you get extra looks and the benefit of the doubt when they like you. Right. What if he's what if his grade is exactly the same grade as another corner? The fact exactly. that Terry on such a great interview and such a great kid is the tiebreaker. And those ties happen all the time. No, that's absolutely right. I think that uh, if I'm Jaleel Hurley or any of those guys, I'm, I'm just – I, I want to go by the the uh, Terry on Arnold playbook and just say, you, you know, not only did you get better as a player because you worked hard, you were a fantastic teammate, you were a, a kind soul, you were a good interview, you were just everything. He's going to – Terry on Arnold is going to be an ambassador that, that uh, Alabama fans are going to love forever, and I'm hoping – a lot of guys on this basketball team are going to be ambassadors that Alabama fans are going to love forever after we beat UConn on Saturday. Yes, I know I'm changing my prediction, but I'm going to say it. We're beating UConn. I'm just I'm I'm drunk on love and alcohol. I got Alabama beating UConn too. But I got Alabama beating UConn because they made over 15 threes. I got, I got them beating UConn because I'm not even sure UConn's here yet. Is there a plane here yet? <laughs> Maybe they went to the wrong place. Wouldn't that be great? What if they're in t- hey, we're, we're playing Alabama, so we flew to Tuscaloosa. Where are they? <laughs> those chickens, that would those, be great. Those chickens well, this, left town. This Final Four has no They left out there. We were coming. They left. <laughs> there, we were coming. Right. So they left. We win by forfeit. We're in Phoenix. But no, uh, no I, I do think Alabama's got a shot. they got to make threes. And they can't let Klingon and and, and the, 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 they can't let them just own the paint. Get them away them from you. the paint. Don't let Ooh. them scare you. Okay. Um, that's, that's going to do it for today's pod. We'll be back. Uh, it's ambiguous right now, but we'll be back. Until then, roll tight, everybody. Roll tight. <laughs>